my dad thinking he's funny. Really? What is going on guys? Welcome to today's video. In this one, we're gonna be talking about the 47cc engine right behind me there again. And I'm gonna be going through the break-in tips that I like to use when first starting up these engines and then the preceding break-in oil mixtures. So let's get started. So I know with this engine, we did the first startup video a while back now, but I'm actually still in the break-in stages. I only ever run it when I'm doing videos with you guys. Um, I should definitely run it off camera a little bit more. That way I can get out of this break-in stage. But when I first break in the engine, I like to run 25 to one mix. I only bought a gallon of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and use that up and that'll be good for me as far as the break-in goes. But then after that, but then after the break-in stage, I'll probably go 32 to 1 or 40 to 1. I'm not going to go 50 to 1. Um, I believe that's actually what the manuals say to go 50 to 1, but I think 32 to 1 or 40 to 1 will be just fine. And it also depends what kind of oil you do use for uh, when you're mixing your gas and oil. Um, I like to use two-stroke performance oil. Um, I'll pull up the brand right now. Uh, I'll have to look at that again though. And then for the gas, I like to just use premium pump gas. And the reason I won't go 50 to one is I just feel that that's not enough oil for this engine. Um, I'll probably go 40 to one, like I said, but uh, definitely I think 50 to one is a little bit dangerous despite what the handbook says. And there are actually some more tips that I like to take it further with for the first startups on these engines, but let's go ahead and start it up so that you guys can hear it, how it sounds again. It's a little bit chilly today. And yeah, like I said, I haven't had it running in uh, a few weeks now. So let's go ahead and do a nice pass on it quick. Also stay tuned until the end of the video because I'm gonna be revealing the hopeful plan for this engine. Uh, we're not gonna always have it on the engine run stand, but this is great for when I'm telling you these tuning tricks and we're just looking over the engine. It's really easy to see everything. So that was about 10 more minutes of running. I was gonna go ahead and drain the tank on it, but decided not to. Um, but obviously we're very rich still. Look at all the oil that's kind of spraying all over the place. Um, I've already wiped off quite a bit. And on a side note, I'm noticing more and more how poor this pipe is actually. You guys probably noticed the huge exhaust leak right here, and there's even exhaust leaks down here, uh, besides the one I've already talked about in the past, which is right here. Uh, this pipe is probably going to be going away, honestly. I want to do that comparison video, though. I'm going to get a regular proper pipe. Um, this is kind of the pocket bike performance pipe. And a lot of you were already talking about how it's designed kind of um, goofy with this, you know, large expansion chamber almost just for looks i would think um it's nothing like i've seen before on regular you know name brand manufacturer pipes but we're gonna definitely have to do that comparison video because this thing is kind of whack but while i say that we're very rich we're supposed to be guys this is the break-in so we want a lot of lubrication going on in this engine and uh yeah that's a good thing i'm not too worried about it once we drop that down to 40 to 1, we'll be in good shape. And you also probably noticed about 10 minutes into that run, the smoke 
a lot of it died down. Um, it is cooler temperatures, like I said, too, so that can affect things, too. But once I got it nice and warm, the vibration cooled down a lot, and the smoke did as well. And while you're in the braking stages, definitely don't hold the throttle wide open. Um, I would say you can safely burp it, but, yeah, you don't want to have it wide open if it's on a bike or if it's on a stand, which you'll probably be on a bike, honestly. But, yeah, take it easy while you're riding. Definitely don't. Um, go for your speed passes. Moving on to my next tip, once you get a good run cycle on the engine, like how I just ran it for 10 minutes there, got it nice and warm, you wanna let the engine completely cool and then um, go for a Titan on your cylinder head right here. So these four Allen heads right here. I've already did that for this engine. Um, I let it rest for 24 hours after I ran it the first time and I went for just a nice snug on each of these bolts. Sometimes with heat and just running an engine for the first time, this can actually loosen up and um, you just wanna go for a snug, guys. Don't uh, go for full turns or anything. They should already be nice and tight, but this is just reassuring that this is uh, nice and tight and um, isn't gonna have any leaks out of your cylinder. Now I like to just do that for the cylinder head. You can also take it further and check your exhaust allen heads as well but uh, carburetor all that stuff should be in pretty good shape um, with vibration though you know it's not a bad idea to run through um, more of your screws than just on the cylinder if you want to take it another step further you can go ahead and check your spark plug so let's do that first make sure everything is firing good and looks right so let me go ahead and remove the spark plug So this is exactly how it just came out of the engine and we can see again how rich it actually is all the oil on there but if I go ahead and wipe this off it should pretty much come right off and it does nothing looks sorry and it pretty much does nothing looks uh, overly burnt and that's kind of what I was looking for on this um, it looks pretty good actually it uh, looks like it's you know burning well but uh, definitely rich like we were talking about because we are breaking it in. Here's a better shot of it and you can better see how it's it's not uh, overly burnt by any means but seems like it's uh, in good shape. Perfect timing, it just started missing a little bit. I rolled the engine inside but that pretty much does it for my braking tips. If there's any that I missed I'm sure you guys will let me know about that in the comment section but now for to reveal my hopeful plan for this engine. It's pretty bold, um, a little bit hesitant to let you guys in on it because it is pretty bold, And uh, but I figure might as well get your guys' opinion and see what you think about this idea. So me and a buddy were going over some ideas as far as what I could put this engine in at this point with snow somewhat right around the corner now. Um, of course, the ideal thing I mean for this engine is it's built for a pocket bike one of the small pocket bikes but we we're going over some thoughts and came up with possibly a pocket snowmobile guys how cool would that be though um, because like I said got to keep in mind that snow is right around the corner at this point so why do I want to put it in a regular bike um, I was even thinking just now I could you know most likely have to start with a regular pocket bike. I'll, sh I'll throw up the picture that I did see on the internet of someone trying to pull this off. I didn't see any further progress on as far as the engine being in it or it even running, but you guys can see there that it is a pocket bike right there and it looks pretty cool actually with the skis on there like that. And I've always been trying to pull off a winter vehicle so I can get some really good winter videos for you guys since that season does last so long here. But what do you guys think about that? I know it's a small engine for something like a snowmobile and that does mean, you know, it's got to stand up to a lot of wet and uh, a lot of weather, I should say. And it is pretty bold, but what do you guys think about that idea? See, the thing I'm worried about is, like I said, the power. Is this engine even going to be powerful enough to pull something like a snowmobile setup? Um, I mean, that's pretty much asking it to pull me on it with snow added underneath it, though. So, I mean, you're getting probably 35, 40 miles per hour with this performance setup that we've built into this engine. And um, by the way, go ahead and check out the series if you're not familiar. Anyways, so you're asking it to pull up someone on snow now, and it's pretty bold, guys. Um, what do you think? Is it just 
a stupid idea or do you think I should try to go for it? What is your realistic idea? Because again, I need something that we can do snow videos with on this channel because I'm not gonna try to do the pocket bike snow chains idea anymore. That kind of wrecked up the X7 actually. And um, the back tire keeps deflating on me now, which sucks. But anyways, what do you guys think about this idea? This will probably wrap up this video for now. Um, I'm still working on that $20 uh, pocket bike idea or weed whacker bike, I guess. Uh, that's what I was going ham on last weekend. Didn't quite get it ready to go, but it is still going along. I'll probably work on that again this week and into the next weekend to hopefully have a, the official video on that ready to go for you guys. The idea is completely different now, so um, I'm looking forward to getting to work on that again. But again, you guys, let me know your opinions down below, and thank you for watching. See you next time.